Hi everyone, Thomas here. I'm glad to present you some new results uh, on faster polynomial time lattice reduction algorithms. This is joint work with my colleagues Paul Kirchner and Pierre Anafou from INRI -RN. So first of all, let me uh, make some recalls on lattices and on the LL algorithm. So what are we working with here? So to set up some uh, setting, suppose that we are taking the Euclidean space uh, here R2 and take a bunch of linearly independent vectors in this space. Then consider uh, the set of all possible integral linear combination of these vectors. You get a very regular structure which is reminiscent of a grid in high dimension and uh, it has actually the structure of a group. As such it's a subgroup of uh, the Euclidean space and by construction it's uh, discrete. This uh, algebraic structure is called a lattice. In a lattice, you uh, might want to measure uh, the uh, density of points uh, in your structure, and for that you use a geometric invariant, which is uh, called the covolume. It can be computed from your basis vector as a, a root of the determinant of the Cram matrix, that is to say, the matrix of inner products of your vectors. It also corresponds to uh, the volume of the parallelepipedes uh, spanned by your vectors. I say it's a geometric invariant because it's uh, invariant uh, under a change of basis. It's independent. Um, actually, so I'm speaking of having multiple bases in your lattice uh, so that the question is how can I uh, get from a screw one, a very bad one, to a nice one like the first one I showed. A uh, solution to do that, at least in dimension two, is to use the shortest vector to, to reduce the uh, length of the longest one. More precisely, uh, you take the shortest element in the coset, which is spanned by the short vector and get through the long one, and then you get a shorter vector, and then you repeat as long as you can. And at one point, uh, this process will stop. This is in substance uh, the so-called Lagrange-Gauss reduction algorithm. And this algorithm has very uh, interesting properties. In particular, the output basis satisfy that uh, the first vector is uh, one of the shortest vector of the lattice. Uh, moreover, you can prove from that that the length of this uh, shortest vector is uh, smaller than four-third of uh, the covolume of the lattice, which is a constant which is independent of uh, the lattice itself. More generally speaking, in any dimension, any rank, uh, we get the following theorem, which is Minkowski-Hermy theorem for first minima, which asserts that uh, for any lattice, lambda of rank d, the length of the shortest vector will be smaller than some constant, which only depends on the dimension, multiplied by the normalization of the covolume. So, we know that such short vectors exist, however, finding them algorithmically is a hard problem has been proved to be NP-hard. However, in 82, Lenstra, Lenstra and Lovach uh, show that there exists some polynomial time algorithms with given any lattice lambda will give you some lattice vector of length at most 2 to the n times longer than the length of the shortest vector. Uh, it might seem pretty big, but actually, uh, this LLL algorithm is uh, quite useful. For instance, we can solve the uh, simultaneous Diophantin approximation problems, which is uh, finding an uh, approximation with rational of real numbers with common denominators. From that, you can uh, use the same method to find the minimal polynomial of uh, algebraic numbers. Uh, you can factorize over rationals. That was the original application of Alain Strelens and Lovach. And of course, you can do cryptanalysis with that, and that might what interests me the most uh, in the context of this conference. Uh, for instance, you can solve knapsack problems in very uh, specific settings. You can break RSA uh, with public exponent, uh, and uh, you can also, uh, of course, uh, attack lattice-based cryptography. Moreover, you can uh, also uh, help computation in algebraic number theory. In particular, it's very important in uh, n normal form computation, uh, working with ideals, and also to control the size of elements appearing in your computation and ensures polynomial time. 
So uh, let's see how uh, we can uh, construct this uh, or reconstruct, let's say, this uh, LLL algorithm. So first of all, if you take any basis, uh, let's say V1 to VD of your lattice lambda, then you get a filtration from that uh, basis uh, constructed as follows. You start from the sub lattice zero and then you consider lambda one, which is the lattice span by V1, then lambda two span by V1, V2, and uh, so on until you reach the full lattice. So you get an increasing sequence of uh, sub lattices. Now you might want to quantify the quality of your filtration and to do so we do a bit of quantization. How we do that, uh, we basically uh, use this covolume, actually we're using the degree here, which is the logarithm of the covolume of each of the sub lattices appearing in the filtration. So in the end you get um, some bunch of real numbers which corresponds to the degree of each element appearing in your filtration. Now uh, we show, we we we've seen that we, uh, the Gauss reduction algorithm uh, helps to uh, reduce lattices in dimension two. But given a filtration, we get a bunch of rank two lattices. Actually, all of the quotients lambda i plus one over lambda i minus one are actually of rank two, so that we can use Gauss reduction algorithm on these quotients. More precisely, what we're going to do is to use uh, the Gauss, uh, Gaussian algorithm on the uh, projected sublattice corresponding to this quotient, then lift the result and replace in our basis and more generally replace in the corresponding filtration. If we look at the effect of this operation, let's say I uh, place I, uh, then we can uh, easily see that the, all the degrees are invariants except the degree of lambda i, which is replaced by, say, lambda i prime. And in particular, we can show that this new degree lambda i prime is smaller than uh, the previous one. So that all in all, the Gauss reduction is a local tool, because we're only applying it in a very specific position of the filtration, to densify it, so that reducing the covalent. Okay. So now from that observation, we can construct a simple iterative algorithm that will do Gauss reduction steps uh, as much as uh, it's possible. And from that, we just start from the beginning of the basis. So let's say the first two vectors, and then we move on to the third, second and third, and so on. But maybe doing so uh, will uh, help to reduce the already previously reduced first, second, and third vectors. So that maybe we need to redo a step of reduction uh, earlier on. And so we then continue, go on, and might be go back and go on and so on. But in the end, we will finish by reaching the end of the basis and no more uh, Gauss step can be done anywhere else. In that case, we say that the basis is LL reduced. If we analyze uh, this algorithm, we will find uh, some uh, dependency which is six tick in the uh, rank and which is cubic in the size of the integers. However, uh, if we are precocious enough, we can use floating point arithmetic instead of exact arithmetic. And that was a uh, first step made by Nguyen and Stille in uh, 2009, uh, where they show that we can do LLL reduction, which dependency, which is quadratic in the logarithm of the size of the elements appearing in your basis. More um, recently, uh, Neumeyer and Stille showed that with some recursive strategy, you can uh, go down to some Kartic or quasi Kartic dependency into dimension and quasi-linear dependency in the logarithm. However, uh, this algorithm is purely uh, theoretical and the constant appearing in the big are too big to be uh, concretely implemented. Um, the question is now, uh, how can we improve this quasi uh, quartic dependency uh, in the rank? Because quasi-linear dependency in the size seems already close to be optimal. So let's try to uh, focus on the uh, rank dependency. So how to get some faster type uh, lattice reduction? So we're going to completely change the structure which is uh, used and instead of doing this iterative back and forth strategy as used in LLL, we're going to use parallelization and recursion on the rank. So uh, let me uh, explain that a bit more. 
So I said that all the reduction boils down to doing some Gauss steps uh, on projected sublattices. What we can do first, and this was already uh, hinted by uh, Villar in 93, was to, is to um, do parallel Gauss step uh, everywhere it's possible when it's non-overlapping. So basically we're taking the first two vectors and the projection of third and fourth and so on. Then you do all your uh, parallel reduction like that. But if you do stop there, then you don't have uh, interleaving relation between, uh, let's say, second vector and third vector and so on. So what you do is shift all your windows and do the same do parallel Gauss reduction uh, at the uh, intersection of the previous blocks. And then you continue again and again and again, and you will, in the end, uh, reach a reduced basis. So if you take a full round of local reduction, so all, let's say, the odd steps and all the even steps, you take two of them. Uh, if you look at the effect of this operation on the, um, uh, on the uh, degree space, then what I've learned is uh, you're basically applying some discretized version of the uh, Laplacian operator. And by that, I mean that each uh, degree is now replaced by the average of uh, its neighbor's ancient degrees. It's very reminiscent then to the diffusion property of the solution of the heat equation because heat equation is basically saying that infinit infinitesimal uh, incre increment of time you are applying the Laplacian operator on your space. And here at each time step, we are applying a discrete Laplacian operator onto uh, the profile space. So since we know that the characteristic time of the uh, diffusion of the uh, solution of the heat equation is quadratic in the diameter of the space, we'll get exactly the same kind of property. Uh, in substance, it means that the number of steps you need to uh, reach a stable, uh, a stable step is roughly quadratic in the diameter of the space, which is here actually the rank of the lattice. Okay. So now we can uh, remark in addition to that, that all the operations are actually local. So we can do the same, but with big blocks instead of blocks two and recurse inside the blocks. So for instance, here we take like big blocks and four of them, for instance, and we will apply parallel reduction on each of these blocks and each of them consists in the same uh, recursive calls. So we're starting by uh, even odd steps and even steps and so on. When it's done, we do we shift all our window by half a block, and we do the same, reducing and calling uh, recursively, recursively on the rank, and we do it again on uh, de-shifted windows, and again and again and again. So we want to make some big algorithmic design by exploiting this locality property, and to do so, it will amount to uh, make an algorithmic design with the only block matrix operations. So uh, let's now see uh, more in more details what are these precisely block operations. First of all, we need to invert triangular matrices. This will be used everywhere. So uh, as a warm up, let's see. So take a triangular matrix, let's say block A, C, uh, D. And if you, you can write directly the inverse of this matrix using Schur's complement. Uh, and it's pretty easy. It's A minus 1, D minus 1, and some uh, block here, minus A minus 1, C, D minus 1. Okay, so formula is pretty explicit, so we can uh, construct a recursive algorithm from that. And the uh, complexity of this algorithm amounts to basically matrix multiplication. So you can inverse for the cost of uh, matrix multiplication. Okay, so uh, now let's see how we can compute uh, the so-called QR decomposition by blocks. So, um, Cure decomposition is an algorithmic null to uh, handle filtration because I said previously that we were directly using filtration, but uh, in practice what we are doing is to have an algorithmic grip on it, so we want to work with uh, matrices. And to do so, uh, we want to find some, say, uh, normal form of uh, the basis, and it amounts to finding some orthogonal transformation to put the basis in triangular form, because triangular form is the uh, a way to encode uh, filtration uh, as matrices. 
So basically, it just means that we are looking at the lattice modulo any kind of rotation of the space, and we take a good rotation so that your matrix is just triangular. It's nothing much more than that. So how we can uh, do this uh, computation by block? So uh, instead of uh, working directly with the basis, we're working with the gram uh, matrix, which is uh, symmetric. And we, work it, we um, divide it in uh, three blocks, A, B, C. Then the first corner, uh, we can just suppose that we can directly uh, find the uh, decomposition. So let's suppose that we find a triangular matrix uh, LA, such that LA transpose LA is equal to A. OK. Then we construct, as before, the Schroes complement uh, of A in the matrix G. So it's C minus B transpose A, B. And we can decompose it uh, directly using, let's say, recursion. And we find L transpose S, LS is equal to S. And we now uh, can show with a bit of computation that the um, uh, shortest key decomposition, the R part of the QR decomposition, is LA, LS, and LA minus, uh, LS uh, transpose minus 1, B, here. Uh, from that, we can uh, directly uh, work some uh, block Cholesky algorithm, which is the uh, transposition of this uh, construction here. Once again, the costly step, uh, except the relation step, is uh, matrix multiplication here, and you can prove that it amounts to uh, matrix multiplication once again. Now the uh, final tool uh, we need to do our reduction is so-called size reduction. So what's size reduction? Um, size reduction is a process which will reduce over diagonal elements using some, let's say, lattice compatible transformations. That is to say unimodular transformation. It's a transformation matrix which has integral coefficient and determinant uh, y. So um, how we can uh, reduce over diagonal elements here? Uh, I uh, did normalize the matrix R we construct with QR decompositions, just dividing the rows by the uh, length of the diagonal. Okay, so how we can do that? Uh, we can use a block uh, structure idea by start reducing uh, the uh, upper part of uh, the over diagonal elements. Okay, let's suppose we can do that. Then we will reduce the lower part. Uh, as before. And like for the QR decomposition for the inversion, it remains to handle correctly uh, the uh, upper diagonal part here, like the upper right elements. So how we can do that? So if we write the uh, transformation, let's say u is uh, u1, u2, and x, x being some uh, unknown for the moment uh, integral matrix. The effect of uh, U on the triangular matrix uh, with that we write by block A, uh, C, D is applying some transformation U1 on A, applying transformation U2 on D, and then doing AX plus C, U2 on the upper block. So if we suppose that U1 and U2 are correctly chosen so that A, U1 and D, U2 are small as we want, uh, then we just want AX plus C, U2 to be close to zero with x being integral. And basically, we get a recursive algorithm from that, which amounts on size reducing a, size reducing d, and finding like that uh, if you take uh, a, a, a minus 1 c u2 for the matrix uh, x, and you're basically good. Uh, this is in substance a block variant of uh, a reduction which has been introduced by uh, SASEN. So we call that, let's say, SASEN size reduce. So we can move on to the uh, actual reduction procedure, which uh, will amount to use our big design by uh, applying parallel reduction and recursion and all of our uh, block tools. So when the dimension is 2, then we use the Gauss algorithm, or uh, if you want to be more efficient asymptotically, you can use Schoenager algorithm, which is uh, quasi-linear in the uh, size b. Then for a certain number of iterations, which is basically quadratic in the bit diameter, as I said, uh, we will do some reduction. And we start, we start, start by um, computing the uh, QR decomposition with the block Cholesky algorithm I showed. And then we say and reduce uh, the basis to reduce the size of all coefficients appearing. And then we uh, do this uh, window uh, strategy 
and we uh, will apply the reduction recursively to all the blocks. So here we introduce uh, some condition which is reminiscent to the Lovage condition in the original algorithm, which will basically say if you need or not to reduce um, and so that if you're reduced enough, you just move on to the uh, next block and so on, so that you will eventually start. So if you look at uh, the running time and where the uh, uh, most computation uh, is done, you can see that for free, when the dimension is small enough, it's uh, with regards to the rank, with regards to uh, the size of the quotient appearing, then you can actually don't go all the way down to the leaves of the recursion tree, but you can stop a bit before and use a more costly reduction, such as the big easy reduction. And the overall running time of the algorithm will remain unchanged. So basically for free, you can use something which is a slightly more powerful than a Gauss algorithm and something which, which is slightly bigger dimension. And so you will get in the end uh, vectors which are slightly shorter than uh, before. So all in all, uh, with this uh, little trick, we can uh, heuristically uh, conjecture that in time, which amounts to matrix multiplication, so d omega multiplied by the condition number of uh, your basis, uh, we can find some vectors which is uh, within um, uh, 2 to z uh, d uh, log log c over log c uh, multiplied by the uh, normalized covolume. So this uh, d log log c over log c is basically because we use this uh, big z uh, instead of going up the way down to uh, rank 2 with uh, Gauss algorithm, otherwise we just get 2 to z d like LLM. So for the reading time, uh, this is a uh, conjectural right now, uh, but we uh, made a lot of experiments and in particular uh, here you have uh, on the left some uh, traces of execution. So uh, the uh, abscissa is the uh, log of the dimension of the lattice we're considering from 2 to the 7 to 2 to the 11 and in uh, ordinates you get uh, the log of the running time in second. So uh, we also we increased uh, linearly uh, the uh, condition number of the matrix we're considering and we see that all the uh, slopes of this, uh, of these graphs are almost all equals and are around uh, 2.7 which was the exponent we used for matrix multiplication. Um, so just before moving on to uh, other uh, experiments uh, and results, uh, I'd just like to point out that we can reduce this uh, d omega uh, dependency for knapsack-like uh, lattices, which